we have um, to talk about where is it here can I find it yeah let's talk about this we need to talk about this quickly so obviously everyone's kind of ranting and raving and getting upset and getting knickers in a twist over the Kanye West interview with Drinks Champs I watched a little bit of it on live stream and spoke about it myself and my thoughts around it and that weirdly enough it was strange to see a black platform be okay with sort of platforming somebody who a lot of people would say is suffering from some sort of mental episode or whatever it may be but they're okay to exploit the situation for their own personal gain because it's a black quote-unquote owned platform but then if you also go with and do the same thing on tmz do the same thing on ellen degeneres or anywhere else people would be ranting and raving and making a point of it so it's interesting right as long as we're exploiting our own people it's okay but if other people do it it's not okay okay cool got the message but off the back of this um obviously people haven't responded the the, the best to it because you know Kanye being Kanye and one point that kind of stuck out and really riled people especially out there in North America or people who are just very passionate about the BLM situation was Kanye's comments about George Floyd and about the arrest and about the subsequent death and about everything else attached to it and he had some very interesting things to say about it off at the back of him watching the Candace Owens documentary that tries to basically unravel some of the misconceptions they feel like behind George Floyd and behind that arrest and everything. And he spoke about it on Drink Champs and I want to give you my opinion on the other side. I, I watched the George Floyd documentary that Candace Owens put up. One of the things that his two roommates said was they want a tall guy like me. They want a tall guy like me. And the day when he died, he said a prayer for, you know, eight minutes. Mm -hmm. He said a prayer for eight minutes. They hit him with the fentanyl. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. When he said, mama, mama his, is his girlfriend. They said he screamed for his mama. Mama was his girlfriend. It's in the documentary. Now... Obviously, people have responded really negative towards that. But the, one of the surprising things that come off the back of it has been people basically attacking the host and one of them being Noriega and basically saying that he should have spoke up and checked, quote unquote, yay for his opinion, which is a weird thing in general to check somebody because of their opinion, to basically chastise them and tell them off like you're their daddy or something. It's really bizarre. And also, if you can remember, the beginning of this interview on Drinks Champs is a really long disclaimer where essentially everyone associated with Drink Champs basically says, we gave this guy a platform and a microphone but everything he says here does not reflect what we do so clearly they have listened and watched the interview back realized he said some wild stuff but they're will willing to receive the hate or whatever it may be because the views will be outstanding at the time of it being deleted or privated actually oh that's the other thing too it got deleted and pulled down from youtube now some people are reporting that revolt took it down some people are saying youtube took it down we're not too sure but it's not there anymore so people have uploaded their own little bootlegs but the disclaimer basically made it seem like they had watched it you know kind of understood that it was going to be something that people wouldn't respond to the greatest and absolve themselves from it completely cool no problem but then to turn around and take it off the platform after you gave the person a platform is after you gave in the person the platform to speak on your thing is a little bit weird and a little obviously pussy to do that kind of thing because if you want to kind of you know swim in the Kanye West um, pool of controversy to gain clicks and to gain engagement you have to understand that you're going to be you know dancing with the devil and dancing close enough to the fire to get burnt you get burnt but obviously you're doing it over the back of trying to make sure that you get views and engagement so you can't then turn around and suddenly be the moral police and somehow kind of apologize so Noriega's gonna they do an apology tour whatever going back to your statement I find it really interesting no one obviously no one jumped in but the thing that really jumps out to me is the fact that he legitimately thinks this is Kanye yay he legitimately thinks a documentary is fact and I think a lot of people do this right a lot of people watch documentaries or this Jeffrey Dahmer series now on Netflix and they never t and they for some reason think because it's been dramatized or because it's been presented in a cool way with these cool graphics and these documents that you can't read online and these accounts of people who are, so who are there at the, at the time and bloody blah, blah 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 that somehow this is a bona fide fact of everything that happened and it's not it's a dramatization these things are made for tv um these things are made for your entertainment they're meant to grip you they're meant to entertain you they're meant to inform you in a little bit but obviously hold your attention so the fact that people like Kanye can watch a documentary and decide 
that your entire view of what you saw with your own eyes is changed and completely kind of been shooken up really does disturb me because all it takes is a couple of clicks online, a couple of, you know, searches and you can find the truth yourself. The first one being, you know, the cause of death, that being the big issue. At the time when it happened with George Floyd passing, um, you know, of the, from the back of flipping police brutality, we all were aware that he had some pre-existing issues, right? In terms of his drug abuse and whatnot. No one was out there saying this guy was a saint. No one was out there saying this guy was Martin Luther King. No one. He wasn't Malcolm or anybody. The thing that was unfair about it was just the fact that we saw this man be arrested for something innocuous and then be and then see basically his life being extinguished in a matter of minutes. That's what was basically unfair about the whole situation. It didn't make any sense. And then we knew, especially with him being a big, intimidating, quote unquote, looking black dude, that it only happened because of what he looked like. And obviously off the back of all the other issues with police brutality in the United States, it was just a it was basically the final nail in the coffin or the final kind of, you know, light to kind of start the fire, whatever the fucking saying is, I don't really know. But whatever it is, it was a thing that kind of got things, it, it, it tipped the, the, the scales, it made everything horrible and then people just decided to go crazy. But no one was saying this guy was a saint. It was just the fact that he, life was basically extinguished in front of our eyes for an innocuous issue and it was so brutal, so callous, so lacking humanity, it just tugged at all our heartstrings. But obviously the, he had some sort of drug issue. We knew this. We knew he wasn't a fucking, you know, he wasn't out there fucking... Um, teaching calculus in some sort of school but if you do a couple of searches online you'll see that the contention around his cause of death was something that a lot of people were talking about at the time and it was something that we were all kind of aware of um, in general so this is the uh, article courtesy of New York Times so George Floyd's cause of death is crucial in trial forensic pathologists explain um, da, 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 da. and if you scroll down you say uh is there a way to one cause of death, right? And it says here, when someone dies, a death certificate is filled out for both public health and legal reasons. The form includes a cause of death in the first section and contributing factors in the second section. We usually have to come up with one cause, says Dr. Judy uh, Milenik, a board certified forensic pathologist. Everything else significant that might be wrong with a person is contributing. Pathologists describe the cause of death as an immediate injury or disease that leads to death. It is the disease or injury which starts the lethal sequence of events without an intervening cause what is the manner of death the manner of death refers to the circumstances surrounding the death there's usually five choices a few jurisdictions include more natural accidental suicide homicide or undetermined homicide is more often described as death at the hands or of another or others a homicide is not necessarily a criminal homicides can be a matter of self-defense for example the courts not medical examiners determine that um da -da -da -da. and if you scroll down it says here Dr. Barker described uh, Mr. Floyd's death, um, uh, cause of death, as a cardiopulmonary arrest, complicating law enforcement subdural restraint and neck compression. So already you see the term here, neck compression. The manner of death he wrote was homicide. The use of the term ca um, cardiopulmonary arrest led to the public confusion because some people wrongly assumed it meant that Mr. Floyd had a heart attack. Cardiopulmonary arrest means the heart stops beating and the lungs stop moving, says Dr. Cyril Witch. Some pathologists say that do not include the cause of death because it's the describes all deaths. Dr. Baker also detailed other significant conditions, including pre-existing ones such as a severe disease um, of the vessels of Mr. Floyd's heart, which he wasn't aware of prior and also described the laboratory findings of the opioid drug fentanyl and methamphetamines in Mr. Floyd's blood. So he already had fentanyl and methamphetamine in his blood but Kanye is saying they hit him with a fentanyl as if like the doctor, the police officers had fentanyl covered in their, over their gloves or they basically sneaked it under his nose as they were putting their knee on his neck. Horrendous. Not including those under the cause of death means including, concluding that those were there before but didn't start lethal sequence of events So Dr. Milenik listing them is meant to is meant to clarify what made Mr. Floyd more vulnerable to the cause of death, he said, not excuse it. Here, context matters. Dr. Barker told prosecutors that if Mr. Floyd had been found dead at home alone with no other apparent causes, they wrote, it could have been acceptable to determine that Floyd died of an overdose because of his over relatively high levels of fentanyl finding his blood collected in the hospital. Instead, recordings revealed both prolonged restraint of Mr. Floyd just before the death, also that he appeared agitated rather than lethargic, which could suggest tolerance of a higher dose of fentanyl, the drug typically causing you to become relaxed. By contrast, Mr. Malik said Dr. Chauvin's defense attorney appeared to be trying to use their medical findings to convince the jury that Floyd was essentially a ticking time bomb already. So they're saying, even though he was a ticking time bomb, he wouldn't have blown up if that guy didn't put his knee on his neck. 
That's essentially what they're saying in this regard. And there were two conflicting kind of reports from the doctors, right? Um, the autopsy signed, forensic pathologists no longer access their entire body, sometimes organ of the... Mr. Floyd's family hired Dr. Michael Baden and Dr. Alicia Wilson to perform a second autopsy. Autopsy, sorry. Both experts said the pressure on Mr. Floyd's neck and back during the restraint by the police led to him to die of asphyxia, a term Dr. Barker did not use in his official report. But before, between, the doc, bef, between the asphyxia and between the heart stopping and the lungs not moving and uh, you know the amount of fentanyl on him and the fucking knee on the back, it's clear to see... Those combinations kind of resulted in him unfortunately passing RIP. So to sit there and think a documentary is going to dispel the entire notion of what happened and what you saw with your own eyes is legitimately insane. And the fact that no one spoke up and said anything about it just goes to show the amount of influence and the amount of clout and the amount of kind of um, the, the 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 nature of Kanye's celebrity of how much you know influence and reverence he commands in that room that even an issue such as frats so sensitive and so kind of um, hot button topic and some things a lot of black people, especially in America, are really sensitive and passionate about, for him to sit there and be able to kind of disparage that guy's legacy and that guy's name and to kind of, you know, essentially, um, you know, stir up some uncomfortable feelings for his family and shit and no one say anything goes to show how perverse and how annoying and how frustrating celebrity is because if that was anybody else on the podcast people would be screaming at you and check and quote unquote checking you or telling you to read read up on stuff or do your googles or whatever maybe you're insulting in jail kicking you off the pod but because it's somebody notable people entertain it and they kind of indulge it and i think even noriega said in one interview he didn't want to interject or correct Ye because he didn't want him to walk off and kind of cancel the interview so he was more worried about the views and the engagement than actually getting to the core of the truth or basically setting some things correct or you know protecting the feelings of the family wherever it may be the views were more important and off the back of that because the, the heat was so bad they've now deleted it I don't like that I, I didn't like the interview I didn't like how exploitive it was but if you're going to put it out put it out don't uh, promote free speech and be out there and say because it various times in the interview the guy's like oh yeah this is your platform you can say and do what you want yeah you feel comfortable to come here when you want if this is platform to say and do what he wants let him say and do what he wants then we can talk about it on the internet but then don't go and delete it because you're scared of the fucking response that you're getting them because it might be damaging it because that's the thing also let's bear this in mind they're not deleting this or taking this down because they feel morally like this is weird or whatever, or they've got a principle around it or whatever it may be, or some reverence or respect for the Jewish people. No, it's because it's going to hurt their pocket. If the JP Morgan Chase Bank could close Kanye's account 140 million in it, imagine what they could do to these guys if they own these platforms that they're fucking streaming on. Revolt's probably hosted on a platform that's owned by some Jewish person out there, so they probably put the call in. So this isn't even done with any form of respect, with any kind of real sincerity, with any kind of um, regret. Is done off the back of them being afraid that their bag is going to be affected. So they did it for the bag, they did it for the views, and now they're being scared and taking it down because they don't want it to hurt their further, you know, um, money making opportunities and whatnot. It's totally disgusting. It goes to show how slimy that whole thing is. He's being, and that's the thing he doesn't realize, Kanye. Um, he's being used by the likes of Candace Owens. He's being used by the likes of people in the right wing, Tucker Carlson, all these people. He's been used by his own friends in hip hop as well to get views and whatever it may be. He's just surrounded by people who don't necessarily have his best interests at heart. And on top of it, he's also a person who it looks like doesn't necessarily like people pushing back and asking him questions. Anyone that kind of debates him, anyone that kind of questions what he says or tries to tell him off or tries to check him, he pushes them away or fires them. So he only is surrounded by yes men or he's just on his own. So if it's not his people taking advantage of him, it's him pushing them away. So he's kind of in this kind of quagmire he's in. It's a bit annoying. It is what it is. But hey, I wanted to report on that because I thought that was a bit of an annoying situation. 